Hello everybody, welcome to our video solutions. <coughs> Hello everybody, welcome to our video solution to problem four from Super Quiz 3. In this problem, we're given the ring Z mod 20Z. So these are the integers modulo the number 20. And we're asked to find the units and the zero divisors. So the units, as we learned in the last video, are all the invertible elements. So question is, what can you find in this ring that is going to be invertible? So uh, if we do it naively, we could start with, say, the number uh, 1, right? Well, of course, uh, we're, we don't have to worry about 0. That's not going to be invertible ever. But we're looking here, right, if we write down a set of representatives, at 0 through 19, we could start with 1, and we say, what's the inverse? That is, what do you multiply 1 by and get 1 modulo 20? Of course, that's just 1. And then you could go to 2. And, and, oh my goodness, this feels like it's actually going to be very, very difficult because, okay, I go 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and I'm not really getting anywhere. Uh, I, it feels like I'm going to have to check every single one of these, which I don't really want to do. Um, but in class, we actually proved a generic result for modular integers. Namely, if we look at z mod nz, and we just take uh, a number a, so this will be an integer a, um, then a is invertible, all right, or equivalently, a is a unit, if and only if the greatest common divisor of a and n is equal to 1. So we'll say why this is true in just a, a second, but see how easy this is going to make part a. So once we know that we're only looking for integers, uh, particularly ones between 0 and 19, whose greatest common divisor when put with the number 20 is 1, well, that, that's going to rule 2 out. Right? Because the GCD of 2 and 20 is, is 2. So we're basically looking for things that are co-prime to 20. And so we can immediately get 3, not 4. In fact, all of the even numbers are going to be, a, we can throw those out, right? Because when you take the GCD of any even number with 20, you'll get something at least 2. So we throw out the evens. Uh, 5, well, actually 5 goes into 20, so that won't work. Uh, so then we'll go to 7, and yes, 7 is prime, so we're, we're good there. Then we go to 9, and yes, 9 and 20 are co-prime, so we'll get 9. Then we have 11. 11 and 20 are co-prime, 13. 15 does not work because 5 goes both into 15 and 20. Uh, then we go to 17, yep, 17 is prime, and similarly 19 is prime. So our units in Z mod 20 Z are going to be 1, 3, 7, 9, 11, 13, 17, and 19. All right, now let's say a little bit about why this is true. So uh, first, if the GCD is equal to 1, then we can use Bezu's lemma. So let's assume that the GCD of A and N is 1. So now by Bezu's lemma, we know that we can write 1 as a z linear combination of a and n. So there's going to exist some integers, say s and t, such that s times a plus t times n is equal to 1. Now, if I reduce this equation modulo n, the second component is going to become 0. So this implies that s times a is going to be congruent modulo uh, n to 1. But this is precisely what we need in order to find a unit, right? We need to find an inverse for this a. And look, there's the inverse, s, right? So this would imply s is equal to a inverse modulo n. All right, so that shows that if the GCD is equal to 1, then uh, then the uh, the element a that you chose, right, just your arbitrary element of z, is going to be invertible, i.e. it will be a unit. Okay, well, what if we know that a is a unit? Will we know that the GCD is equal to 1? 
So if A is a unit, so if A is a unit, well, then we know we can find an inverse modulo 20. So then we'll just use the same S. There exists S in Z such that AS is congruent modulo N to 1. But this implies that N is going to divide 1 minus AS. So N divides 1 minus AS, or in other words, there is something you can multiply N by such that it will equal 1 minus AS. So this implies there exists some integer T such that n times t is equal to 1 minus as, or equivalently, as plus nt, or tn, right, we can match what we had up above, is equal to 1. So this actually shows that all these steps we had uh, at the end of the first part of the proof were actually, uh, if you like, we could invert those, those steps, right? These are actually equivalences. Okay, so we know that we can find elements, uh, integers, s and t, uh, such that AS plus TN is equal to 1. And that, by Bezu's lemma, tells us that A and N are relatively prime. So this implies, again, by Bezu, that A and N have GCD equal to 1. So this gives us this equivalence between the GCD of A and N being 1 and A being a unit. So that justifies uh, our work up above. All right, now how about the zero divisors? Well, for modular integers, we actually showed that all of these rings are going to break up as a union of the units and the zero divisors. So the other elements, right, are going to be all the zero divisors. Two, four, well, we put zero in there. Um, two, four, okay, six, eight, oh, what did we skip? We skipped the, the odds. We'll do those at the end. So you got 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and now let's get the missing odds. So let's see, we had five, and let's see, we uh, what do we what do we miss in uh, fifteen, right? Because five, let's see, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Yep, fifteen. That's the only other one. So these would be the zero divisors. Okay, well that that relies on this result that the in modular integers that the non-units will be zero divisors, uh, but that's actually not too hard to prove either. So another claim. So if uh, the GCD of A and N is greater than 1, then A is a zero divisor. So the proof of this is very straightforward, because what I can do is take A, and I need to multiply it by something and get 0. And what I'm going to multiply it by, of course, which something which is non-zero, is n divided by the GCD of a comma n. Okay, so first, because the GCD is greater than 1, then we know that n divided by the GCD is strictly less than n. So this is not going to be 0 modulo n. Okay, so this, which this implies n over GCD of a over n, uh, a comma n, is not congruent to zero mod n. So this is eligible to be something we multiply a by to show that we actually get uh, a zero divisor. Okay, but this is equal to, and I can rewrite this, a over the GCD of a comma n, and this makes sense to write because we know the GCD of a and n will divide a. And now I multiply this by n. So this here is an integer. And I'm going to multiply it by n, which means modulo n, this is congruent to 0. Therefore, we, we start with some a, we multiply it by a non-zero element, and we get 0. Therefore, a is a 0 divisor. OK, so. This is a pretty useful way of classifying all the elements in the ring of uh, integers modulo some number n. You get either units or zero divisors. Units, when the representative you choose is relatively prime to the modulus, and a zero divisors otherwise.
All right. Uh, hopefully this, along with the previous video, help you a lot with the understanding of units and zero divisors.